It legitimately feels like it has been forever since the last Tuesday Garage. But don't worry, I haven't been slacking. I've been taking care of all the small things. Boys and girls, it is so good to be back. Finally be doing another Tuesday Garage. It has been a while. It has been a long while. And there have been some legit reasons why it has been so long. But in the meantime, I have not been slacking. I have been taking care of business, doing little small things here and there. It's all important. It's needed. It's stuff that I've needed to get done. But it's just not, it's not content stuff. And it's really just little things here and there. But we're going to go over all the little things that I've done, all the little things that I've found, all the other things that have happened in the meantime, and all the things that are to come. So first, let me show you the parts bin. The parts shelf is getting overloaded. There are so many good things here and I am super excited to get to all of them and I think we are almost to the point where we finally can, but let me talk about why it has been so long and why none of this has made it onto the car at all and why that's there too. As fate would have it, things just kept getting in the way. I needed to do some work on my daily driver, which is the Honda Jazz. It kept giving me a check engine light, the catalytic converter. I found one in the UK for like 80 pounds, ordered it, got it here, went to go take out the old cat, come to find out that the whole exhaust was either all rusted together or welded together. I don't freaking know, man, but look at this. This. This is, this is bad. It was all bad. All the exhaust was bad. I could not get the catalytic converter and the rest of the exhaust apart. That flange looked like somebody had actually welded it together. I'm just gonna have to buy a whole new exhaust. That ended up taking a lot of time to finally get in. When it finally did get in, there were no gaskets with the new exhaust. So then I had to order gaskets and that took a while. And while I was waiting on the gaskets, my wife's alternator went out on her minivan. And as soon as I fixed the Jazz, she was driving the Jazz because her alternator was dead. Then I had to wait on that to arrive. So finally got the alternator in and then the jazz started running bad again having some weird hesitation at, at low speeds so i order a new fuel filter assembly because it's an in-tank thing and that took forever and then that got here and i put that in and it hasn't fixed the problem it's still having this weird hesitation thing but it's still dry it's driving fine no more check engine light the exhaust system's in everything's good with that my wife's alternator's in she's happy with that finally the daily drivers and the wife's vehicle is back to normal this whole time i've been having to drive the stage yet it has become the only car in the family. And I'll tell you what, having the only car in the household be your project car, ugh, it reminds me a lot of Texas, having to drive the Z every day. But unlike Texas, where I could leave a project in the garage, I could be like midway through it and just be like, okay, I'm done for the night. I'll get back to this tomorrow. I can't do that because the car's outside here. I can't leave it up on jack stands. I can't leave it torn apart. That's just the rule of my neighborhood. So it's it's what I gotta, I gotta live with. Real quick, before we go out and we do some things together, I wanna talk about what parts we have sitting here because there's a lot of good things to talk about. Some of it is just straight up maintenance. I think this is a new water pump, new brake master cylinder. It's the upgraded GTR one, a new overflow tank for the radiator. As you know, I've got a new coil radiator, a GK Tech radiator fan. This is a new aftermarket windshield washer fluid tank with motor because I want to relocate that. A Chase Bays power steering kit so we can relocate that near the headlight and off of the strut tower. Just like the RBZ, I'm trying to clean up the engine bay as much as possible. We're gonna take everything we can out of it. Also got a Tomei timing belt, Nismo thermostat, new pulleys, new crank gear, tensioner, coil stuff, GK Tech, that's for the fan, some other hardware, some exhaust wrap, turbo blanket, high flow catalytic converter, three inch, this new downpipe from the turbo. It gets rid of the dump pipe and the whole stock exhaust so it's all one piece that's a nice unit came from australia i'm excited to put that on a new exhaust manifold and we'll talk about that in a second new front lights here and that's also something we'll talk about yeah man that's all the stuff that is like now here and ready to go and oh and a full gasket kit and so that brings me to the exhaust manifold so i bought the gasket kit because i wanted to refresh a couple things especially when i do the timing belt change and i've been hearing an exhaust leak so i thought okay maybe it's like a turbo gasket or an exhaust gasket or something like that. I see Mrs. BC. She's like staring at me. Anyway, <laughs> I got all those gaskets because I heard this exhaust leak. I took the heat shields off the turbo and the exhaust manifold to see where the leak was coming from. And sure enough, the exhaust manifold was split. Like it is hard cracked between cylinders three and four. I'm not ready to go top mount turbo. The only solution to keep everything stocked the way it is, is to go OEM. I bought this second hand off of somebody. I'm going to take the nubs off of this and all that, clean it up nice and well. And then we're going to wrap it and 
it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool for now, and, and I'm, I'm totally cool with it. I got some new to me front markers. These are actual genuine Nissan. These are actually from a 1993 to a 1997 Nissan Altima. They are the exact same ones that are used in the Stagia, only you can get these OEM clear. So we're gonna do that today too. One of the last things that we're gonna change out is this clock spring. There's a lot of drama surrounding this. We're gonna talk about it more when we get out to the car, but long story short, this is the old one. It is broken inside and uh, yeah, um, yeah, we'll talk about that when we get outside. In the meantime, while I get all my stuff together and get ready to head outside, I recently went to a Cars and Coffee event with the Stage. I shot some footage, some cool Euro cars, some JDM stuff. It was pretty cool overall. I'm going to roll that footage for you right now, so enjoy. <laughs> you can actually see the front markers now they do look like they're blacked out but painted the inside black when i took the lens off and then resealed it i actually glued them together so that they weren't leaking anymore we'll see what it looks like with the clear ones on but one of the things that i've done in the meantime i talked about this a long time ago i have replaced all the light bulbs in the entire car with leds it looks pretty pretty sweet yeah much cleaner looking very nice turn signals and backup lights and everything everything hello Good, how are you? That super cleaned up the entire look of the car. With these taillights, kind of brings everything into the more modern. Moving on to the interior. I finally got this piece, man. It came in, it took so long, but it finally came. And in addition to that, I also got a new head unit, which is pretty freaking dope because now, if you remember, we found a CD inside the old head unit when we bought this car, but the CD player wouldn't play it. Now, we actually have the car's official soundtrack freaking working. <laughs> yeah, so that's dope. If you maybe saw it out of the corner of your eye, look at this, man. Now have a handbrake here. This is just homemade, just whatever cheese to kind of fill in the gaps. I just took my original console, cut it myself, trimmed everything back, put this leather in here just to close the gaps up and make it look a little bit more natural. Eventually, of course, when we go full five speed, the goal is to replace this whole center console with the actual five speed console. Well, let me tell you what, those things are unicorns. Those things are super rare, very, very hard to find. For the time being, works perfectly fine. I'm not ashamed of it. Looks great. Everything's coming together in this area here. And with that the handbrake here is gone the foot pedal's gone i've already ordered a new manual dead pedal from terra firma so that should be coming soon which will move everything over and get out of the way of where the clutch needs to be i now have installed a boost gauge up here it is currently not wired because i do have some more things i want to do under the hood before i go ahead and place the map sensors that's needed for that i mounted to the outside of the cluster surround i cut a slit and then slid the mount through it so it just looks a lot more natural i still gotta clean it up a little bit and maybe paint it like a flat black but from here from my perspective it's nice out of the way i can still see the full temperature and the warning lights that are over there are no big deal nothing to really worry about now you'll see here that everything is torn apart airbag is down there if you remember when we got this car the horn was relocated to a freaking button that was right here it was just kind of weird i always noticed that the steering wheel was actually slightly off a little bit the, again the horn didn't work and then I made another shady discovery that really kind of blew my mind. I left it as a cliffhanger for you guys, but today I'm gonna to show you what I discovered and why I finally dug into all this to figure out what the heck is really going on. So back when I first bought my car, I was pulling away from the dealership and I noticed that the car would not go into high gear. Like it was staying only in third gear, overdrive wasn't working and there was no way I was gonna drive it home. Also, all the gauges weren't working. Everything was freaking totally wacky do. I told the guy, I'm not taking the car, you need to get this fixed and eventually they got it fixed and they ended up replacing the gauge cluster. When he did that, my mileage is wrong or my kilometer 
Is it Kalamage? I don't know. That's all wrong. I thought if I had him send me the broken part, someday I could swap out the odometers and get everything right as rain. After a few months, he finally sent me the gauge cluster, which is here. I went ahead and started tearing it all apart, get out the pieces and parts that I needed. And here is the odometer. Now the odometer, it's all part of the speedometer. It's one unit. You have to replace the speedometer and the odometer at the same time. And to be honest, I wasn't totally sure if I wanted to go ahead with this because there's a possibility that the needle's not fully calibrated in any way blah 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 anyway so i had taken this out and i'm looking and if you see right there see what that says airbag when i was taking this apart i removed the face to see if i could pull the odometer out i noticed there was this tape right here this tape is covering a light bulb and that light bulb is permanently affixed to the circuit board. So you, you cannot take the light out. It's a warning light for the airbag that you are not supposed to be able to tamper with, but somebody put tape over the airbag light so that I wouldn't know there was a freaking airbag fault. <sighs> okay, horn doesn't work. Airbag lights tampered with. Steering wheels off. And I'm thinking, okay, what if, <laughs> There's no airbag in this thing. So finally, I took the airbag out. I started looking at it and uh, the airbag's good. The airbag's legit, it's in there. But it's obvious that somebody at some point was messing with something. So I decided, okay, let me get this horn working. In order to do that, this is the clock spring. Now the clock spring runs power from the steering column through this ribbon cable that can wind up and unwind. So as you're turning the steering wheel and all of that runs to here, which then runs to these wires inside the actual steering wheel itself. So this is for the airbag and this is for the horn, okay? I'm trying to figure out why it's not working and I'm doing continuity tests with the multimeter. Try to check continuity between here, pins here and nothing. I'm getting no continuity. Now this thing is really hard to get apart and I finally did and when I did I noticed that the ribbon cable had been freaking severed. <sighs> okay so I'm like oh okay let me buy a new one of these and luckily there's a freaking part number right here. So I put the part number in the system, looked it up on the internet and this is not even for a Nissan Stagia. It's for a Nissan Micra. Now my mind is all over the place. We've got a horn that's been rewired. We got a clock spring that one is trash. Two it's not even for the same car. The airbag this whole time has not even been connected, has had no power to it and the, the light was covered up and tampered with. It makes me wonder if the new cluster that's in the car now now, that airbag light is tampered with as well because it hasn't been lit. I've had no indication of an airbag problem. And obviously the airbag has never been wired up. I'll bet you there's tape on that one too. Be careful who you buy stuff from. Just be careful. If you're, if you're looking to buy an import car and uh, you didn't buy it necessarily for the premise of it being a project like I did. Be careful. <laughs> Just wow, dude. Just freaking wow. Exposed. Anyway, we are going to put... I ordered a new one. This is from a Nissan Micra. We're gonna go with what we've got. After doing more and more investigation of the setup that's in there, the steering wheel that's in there and everything, one wire horn is fine. Also, I noticed the main plug that plugs into here, the pin for the horn had been depinned and that's what was running to the buttons. I repinned all that, figured out which wire was the right wire and all that. We're gonna install this today. <laughs> We're gonna get our horn and our airbag right as rain. Maybe test out these lights, put those in, see what they look like, whether or not I wanna keep the darker or not. Car will start being a little bit more normal and stop having this this hacked up crap inside of it someday probably when I go back to do the boost gauge when I go back to finish all of that up I'm gonna pull the cluster out and I'm gonna see if indeed the airbag light has been covered on the cluster that's in there too I, I just have a feeling I have a feeling it's been covered I hope I'm wrong I really do that's it for now oh one more story. So as I alluded to earlier, my car is currently only rear wheel drive. I started hearing this weird squeaky noise, like almost like a bird was flying next to me. Just this wiki, 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 wiki. And it just kept going on and on and on everywhere I was going. And then it got to where it was almost like a, this pinging metallic, pinging noise and then it started sounding almost like metal grinding like almost like uh like ball bearings in some gears that's what it sounded like it was like this this chirping grinding 
pinging noise at the same time. And it, it almost sounded like pinging on a hollow tube. And so I thought, what would be making a pinging through a hollow tube and a grinding and a weird sound like that? And listen, it sounded like that. That was the same pitch of what I was hearing. Do some investigation. I was like, let me pull the, the front transaxle out, deactivate the all wheel drive and see what I find. And as soon as I pulled this drive shaft out, I realized what the noise was from. This front U joint right here. Look at this. I can't even, <sighs> it's completely, completely seized. I'm a hundred percent. This was getting bound and then releasing that torsion that release that flex was then pinging through this like so yeah it's gone the, the, the this this drive shaft is trash that's the deal with that currently rear wheel drive i talked to tom at custom import arts he said we could drive rear wheel drive as long as we have the fuse pulled and this out we could be rear wheel drive forever that's probably going to be the plan because in the long term we're going five speed there's no sense in spending money on automatic parts let's just hold it out wait till we get that five speed conversion done and then we'll be back to four wheel drive without any further ado let's go back out to the car and let's start working on this steering wheel i got the new lights in and I'm not sure which i like better i mean definitely the smoked is cool but i mean obviously that's gonna be good let's see what they look like with the lights flashing all right that one's definitely brighter disperses the light more way more visible than that one yeah i think for for safety's sake and all things considered, I think I'm going to go with the clear over on this side, but maybe look to a way to smoke them a little bit eventually. All right, first step, disconnect power, especially working with the airbag. It's like 11. Why, why is it an 11? All right, battery's disconnected now. Back into the ride. Time to dack dack the steering wheel. Boom. You could barely see here there's a mark and then there's a, a dot in the back there it was off just a little bit Ugh, there we go things that also didn't work on this car was the turn signals if i turn the turn signal on i do a turn and then when you start turning back the other way right normally it should just turn off by itself but it wasn't doing that it was just staying on and i had to manually turn it off after i completed my turn one of the reasons why i kind of wanted to do this project together with you is so that you can kind of see how that system actually works because i did fix it and it's freaking awesome on the back of the steering wheel you see these three holes right here on the steering column you see this green piece and it has three pegs on it and this was actually pushed in it was turned off like it was in a different direction I think when someone put the steering wheel on they didn't take the time to actually line the holes up with the pegs and they just shoved the steering wheel on so I'm glad that over time it didn't like shear them off because that would have freaking sucked now that I've got it all lined up everything works which is freaking awesome so this is what's supposed to happen when you turn the turn signal see that little arm that pops out there all right, and then as this piece turns, there's that little peg that touches it, right? And then when it comes back the other way, it actually flips it off. We just make sure that everything's lined up and when we put this on, it, everything should be good to go and lined up and yeah, that's how a turn signal thingy Bob works. Here is the clock spring. Here's the plug for it. I bought it actually from a wrecker here in Germany. Let's see, it's gonna go on like this in this orientation. There's holes that line up all the way around. So you'll see here, there's a little peg with an arrow and we're just gonna turn the clock spring to match up with that little arrow there. So now you see it's in a, a nice up down orientation. Um, go ahead and plug this in down here and there's a little clip right there from this point I need to there should have been a little pin right here uh oh this may be slightly problematic okay there should have been a pin on there I, I thought I mm, that's, that's frustrating so that pin goes into this slot right here where my finger's poking through so that the clock spring actually turns with the steering wheel. Without that, it's not going to turn with the steering wheel. It's time to get creative. Let me go grab the old unit and see what I could piece together. All right, man, I took the peg from the old one. I like actually cut it out and then uh, shaved down the base. Uh, I thought about just drilling something in here, but I don't want to damage the ribbon cable underneath, but 
I have now super glued the peg in place where it needs to be. And then this little rubber stopper will go over all of that. So we're gonna have to let that dry and cure for a little while, but it should be good while we get some other things done. I need to create a cable that has a fisheye on one side and a blade on the other in order to interface. So while I put that cable together, that'll give the glue some time to dry and then we should be able to put everything back together. All right, the jumper cable is made with an eyelet on one side, blade on the other. That's gonna interface with this single wire. As you can see, the steering wheel is back on pin is where it needs to be i've already tested too by turning back and forth turn signals are engaging disengaging automatically everything is good there i'm going to go ahead and get the airbag put in all right everything is together and now this just kind of tips up into place and then you're going to see that on the sides all these little trap doors there will be a bolt through there bolt through the other side airbag bolts i talked about before into each side here and then boom that puts your steering wheel back together so that's how it's done let me tighten those down and then we'll get the battery back on hopefully hopefully the airbag doesn't deploy that would suck shouldn't i mean there's no reason why it should and then hopefully the horn works yeah all right back together now i want to be clear i do make the assumptions that all of this is the way it is because perhaps this had an aftermarket steering wheel on it when it was imported and then because of laws obviously they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to sell it that way so then they just kind of scrounged together what they could find to make it work i got that but the fact that it wasn't put together right then again the airbag and all that it just it's just weird it's just weird man it's weird and it's worrisome Okay, got power back to the car. Let me find my elusive 11 mil. I don't know where it's at. Everything should work now. Turn signals, airbag, all that stuff. I'm gonna push the horn from out here, <laughs> at least for this first time, but it should work. Oh, yes. Yes, that's freaking dope. That is a win. That is a freaking win so now officially everything is back together here the horn works the way it's supposed to we no longer have that stupid horn button the airbag actually has power and will do things now the turn signals work again stuff's wired the way it's supposed to be wired this is getting closer and closer back to that oem fresh man just gotta tidy up the panels and all that stuff but i i could take care of that that's no problem Good things are in store, guys. Good things are in store. Now because the freaking Jazz works, because my wife's van works, I'm able to get away from having to drive this thing every single day and get some of these other projects knocked out. I'm pretty excited about all the things that are come. I have this huge, awesome vision of the way the engine's gonna transform. The goal is to get this as fresh as the RBZ. And I'm excited about doing something different. I'm excited about the RB25. Along with the whole front end, eventually the Skyline 34, maybe, I don't know. I'm not gonna lie, stage is growing on me. I do have some ideas for the front. We're gonna get to all that. In the meantime, I'm gonna continue to do small things because there are a lot of small things that do need to be done. All right, guys, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll be back again and again, and, and I'm excited about other things to come. It's gonna be sweet. All right. Ciao a tutti and aloha. Continue to stay safe, continue to stay healthy. These were unprecedented times. Don't be a moron. <laughs> Don't be a knucklehead. Do the right thing. Stay safe. Ciao a tutti and aloha. Bye-bye.